there's a selfish part of me that um, uh, is uh, very excited to keep Senator Kelly here in Arizona to continue to do the work for Arizonans. So that is the chair of the state Democratic Party reacting to the news that Arizona Senator Mark Kelly will not be Kamala Harris's running mate. Today she announced that Minnesota Governor Tim Walz will join her at the top mm. of the ticket. The pick comes just weeks after President Biden bowed out of the race. Mm -hmm. We have more now with our political editor, Dennis Welch. Yep, Hello, yep, Dennis. yep, another big development here in this presidential campaign. And for Walz, this marks a short but fast rise from a relatively little known Midwestern governor to the national stage as sharp verbal attacks on former President Donald Trump and his Make America Great agenda, in large part fueled that rapid ascent. So exactly who is he? The 60-year-old Walls is a military veteran and a former high school football coach. He was first elected to Congress in 2006. Walls represented a conservative uh, leaning rural district for 12 years. After getting elected governor in 2018, Walls worked with a slim Democratic majority to pass an ambitious Democratic agenda. That agenda included free college tuition for low income students, free meals for school children, and protections for tra tra transgender people, and legalizing recreational marijuana. Because of that legislative record, Arizona Democrats are quickly embracing the Minnesota governor at the top of the ticket. We are so excited. You know, he is uh, a fighter for Minnesotans. He um, is the son of Army veterans, veteran himself. He was in the National Guard. He was a high school teacher and a football coach. And he's a salt of the earth guy. He comes from a small town, working class family. And we are so excited. And that same record that has Democrats excited has Republicans claiming he's far too liberal. During his time as governor, Walls also championed climate change issues and signed legislation that protected access to abortion. However, he did face criticism for the way he handled widespread protests following the murder of George Floyd in 2020. Walls was criticized for deploying, not deploying the National Guard sooner when riots broke out. Well, I think in Arizona, knowing that border security is still the top issue, it's really issue one, two, and three, that, yeah, absolutely, her record on the issue coupled with some of the things he's done, like allowing driver's licenses for illegal immigrants, I'm sure that will be campaign fodder. And Walls did sign that bill into law regarding the driver's licenses back in March 2023. Advocates included law enforcement, business, and religious groups who said it would lead to safer roads and a stronger economy. But opponents said Walls was potentially opening the door to undocumented immigrants to become eligible to vote and gain access to other public programs. So, Dennis, what's your opinion on this pick? <laughs> I think it's uh, one of the more uh, conservative picks that she could have made. It's one of the safest picks she mm -hmm. could have made. I think had they, she went with uh, Shapiro from Pennsylvania, which was rumored was the other, uh, was whittled down to two people, mm -hmm. yeah. um, Shapiro from Pennsylvania being the other one. I think, you know, if she picked him, uh, it would have been a bigger issue with the Democratic Party itself because Shapiro has taken some controversial issues with them. Top among them has to be he supports school vouchers and Democrats across the country are desperately opposed to that. They're opposed to that here in Arizona. That would have created some problems. So I think it's a conservative pick because what you want to do with a VP choice is do no harm. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of enthusiasm that Harris is riding right now. Why would you want to dampen that yeah. by picking somebody who may turn off significant supporters of Democrats? I mean, mm -hmm. teachers, teachers unions, big backers of democratic politics. So it was safe, a yeah. safe move. Yeah. So before it was whittled down to Shapiro and Walls, I mean, a lot of folks, not just here in Arizona, thought it, you know, uh, Mark Kelly was going to be the guy. Yeah, and, he, and he, obviously it seemed like he was in the final running there, he, yeah. you know, uh, but it seems like, you know, Walls, because he did gain that notoriety. He'd go on cable news shows, other news shows, and he was very good with the attack dog role that mm -hmm. he was going into. And it's almost like he was auditioning for that. He gained a lot of attention for that, sure for did. the way he talked about uh, Trump, that talked about the Make America First, uh, Make America Great Again agenda. And I think that helped fuel uh, Walls to the top where mm -hmm. he is right now. Uh, you know, some drawbacks, uh, some problems that uh, Kelly had faced was from labor, labor groups, unions 
unions in particular, big supporters of Democrats, Democratic politics, they weren't 100 percent sold on Kelly because of some of the positions he's taken or hasn't taken in the past. Chief among them was this uh, Protect Act, would have made it e easier to unionize. Uh, Kelly initially uh, didn't take a position on that, and it was only after his name came out of this VP stakes mm -hmm. that he said, oh, I definitely would right. sign that now. Yeah. So it, it gave a little bit of pause for labor groups. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting. Are you working on an interview with Kelly? be interesting to hear from him now. Always working on an interview <laughs> with Kelly. <laughs> Looking forward <laughs> to it. Just thought I'd ask for yeah. the cameras. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> Dennis thank you.